What's going on everybody? Today the market is taking a dump, but I'm going to show you something really really interesting here with XRP and because XRP is doing something interesting, that means there's a sign of hope for others. I've been talking about, you know, this correction for for the last several weeks and, you know, I've given my thoughts about it. So instead of going through all that again, I just wanted to show you something here on XRP. Look at this. This is the long term this is very important, by the way, if you're an XRP holder. This is the linear scale chart, by the way. Um, this is the long-term downward resistance line. Look at this. I connect this wick, this wick here, this wick here, and this wick here. And we can see, look at this. The price has broken out. I'm so used to looking at log scale that I totally, you know, haven't looked at linear in a while. Um, so usually when this happens it's a good indication that yes log scale will eventually break out too log scale is more conservative that's why i lean towards it but i would say most of the the big dollars especially in the stock market look at linear scale so anyway we see this cup and handle forming here right you have this cup you have this handle this long-term downward resist this is a six-year downward resistance line it's very very significant and look at this we broke out with a bullish engulfing candle you can see here let me zoom in and look at this not only did we break out right the following candle came down and back tested the bull market support band and the long-term downward resistance line so not only did this candle break this was to me the most important candle in xrp's life at the moment um you know relatively speaking because this candle right here broke above the downward resistance line you could say this one did too but the thing is it not only it did that it it also has broken out of this cup and handle of the downward resistance line and you could say well why is that significant because that is the second base remember we talked about here's your first base right you you consolidate this is reaccumulation by the way see most charts are in a bear market. XRP has been in a bear market for the last six years. Most charts have only begun their bear markets, well, I should say, um, are in, sort of in their middle of their bear markets, um, and they're starting their retracement process. Um, but you could see XRP, right, ranging, breakout, ranging, and then also we broke above that downward resistance line. So you can see, well, Look at this current red candle we have. It's a bearish engulfing candle. It doesn't look good. But the thing is, look what happened. It came right down to the bull market support band, and then it wicked through it. You can see, uh, let me zoom in here. You can see that wick right there. That wick came right through, and uh, then it got bought right back up. So luckily we're in the beginning of the week it's tuesday so what we want to see um it's better that it dumps in the beginning of the week versus the end of the week because the end of the week is when you get the weekly close and we want the weekly close to be strong right so but anyway i look at this i look at it like you know we have a cup we have a handle we broke out but also we have this down move right we have a pump up and now we're in the middle of the retracement. So you have point A and point B and you're in the middle of that sort of retracement. So it's gotta work itself out. Um, you know, my, um, I've already given my thoughts about, you know, what I think it could be, you know, A, B, C, D, and now we're getting E before that big breakout. Right, or you can say one, two, three, four, five with an A, B, C, and now we have a one, two before the big breakout. So those are two counts supporting higher prices. But then also, I mean, let me actually get to a higher time frame. Let's see. Look at this. If you look at the three-week chart, um, you know we're we've broken out. We've broken out above this long-term downward resistance line. So, you know, usually when it breaks out, sometimes you get a big push to the upside, but it broke out at the same time Bitcoin was having its correction, right? So I really, I want to talk about XRP versus Bitcoin. This is the chart we really need to talk about. Um, 
to me, it's it's very interesting. You know, when a, the normal person looks at it and they say, oh, this is a terrible looking chart. It's going down, 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 down. You know, it makes people sick to their stomach. And that's typically meaning they don't want to buy. But when you, not financial advice, but as an investor, when you buy crypto, it's not supposed to feel good. It's supposed to feel terrible, right? Your portfolio is down 60, 70% right you feel like you're going to throw up how can you even bear spending any more money when the price just keeps dumping and dumping and dumping that separates the boys from the men um you know as far as their conviction goes right and you can say well i've already bought and it keeps going down but that's why we dollar cost average because you don't really know where the exact bottom is that's why we don't want to preemptively buy so what do we do we wait for a base to form and look what we see here you can see how it comes down, right? And you have this big spike up, keeps coming down. Spike up, keeps coming down. But look at this. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six weeks right here of going sideways. So we're not going down anymore. We're going sideways. And here's the cool part. Look at this. Let me actually zoom in here. And by the way, before I zoom in, we, are, we have a triple nine buy. We have a triple nine buy, okay? So that's, you know, looking at TD Sequential, um, you know, it, it, it's very exhausted to the downside. The price is very exhausted. Let me turn the RSI on. Look at the RSI. It is drastically oversold. The MACD is oversold. Actually, I don't want the MACD right now. Um, let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, so you can see we are oversold. Um, so let me get rid of that now. So yeah, we have three nines. Very, very interesting. And by the way, you know, I mean, looking at some of this news, it, you know, the case is going to be ending soon. You know, people say, oh, they could lose, they can win. It doesn't matter. It, 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 you know, if they lose, that means they have to pay money. But it doesn't, even if they lose, it's XRP still not a security. The judge ruled it is not a security. That is the law of the land right it is not a security the point of what they're doing now is the settlement talks how much ripple has to pay for their settlement and i think they have to pay because it's all about pay to play they sued google they sued amazon they sued tesla if you're going to be the big dog on wall street and you're going to be the big dog on the block you got to pay us first it's like the it's like the mafia right if you're going to do business in my town you got to pay up you know what i mean you know what i'm saying right so you know that's just the deal of of what it is and they they didn't go after some little small blockchain company they went after the big dog they went after ripple right ripple is the largest united states cryptocurrency on the planet there's no other there's no other you know, bitcoin's not an american ethereum is not american stable coins don't count right i mean you have cardano that's american but ripple's bigger than them right so xrp is a native is the united states native right so they go after the number one usa coin that's why they threatened hey i'll leave the country no problem most of our business is outside but they didn't leave why because they have confidence that they're going to stay in the united states they have confidence that they're going to win they already won they already won it's all of what what we're waiting for is the settlement maybe they got to pay some money whatever the case may be uh, no, the, the important thing is it ends. That's what we want. We want it to end. Once it ends, then, you know, Ripple's free. It's a free, right? So, um, so yeah, once that happens, we're, we're ready to go. Now, as far as regulations go, um, they're looking for a stable coin regulation and then eventually um, a crypto rev uh, regulation. But all right, enough of the boring talk. Let's talk about the price. So we have this base down here, and I've talked about this base. If you look at the smaller time frame, uh, let's inch our way in. Let's go to the three-day chart first. I mean, you can see it pretty clearly. Um, the price is sort of basing out, right? It's it's starting to range, right? Sellers are are very exhausted. Um, you know. I mean, think about it. The Bitcoin price broke out into a bull run in 2021. And now it's above its 2021 bull run. XRP hasn't had a bull run since 2018. And, it, you know, it, it, 
it's it just baffles me how undervalued XRP is relative to the position that they're in. See, I wouldn't be so adamant on XRP if XRP had a previous bull run and let's say it got up to, you know, five, six, seven dollars, maybe ten dollars, and then it pulled back down to two or three dollars, and now it's starting to inch its way back up to four to five. I wouldn't really care. It's like every other coin. But since XRP didn't break out, it has yet to reach its percentage potential, its Fibonacci extension, right? And to me, there's a lot of value in that. Um, and then also, you're you're not betting on some random meme coin. You know, it's you're you're positioning yourself um, in a token that sur is you know, being surrounded by a company named Ripple who are knee deep in all of the um, different types of programs, government programs, central banks, partnerships, like SBI Holdings in Japan. I mean, you know, they're, there's, they're shaking hands all over the world. So they've established, I mean, for goodness sake, they have, the World Bank has talked about XRP. Um, they talked about, I mean, why would the World Bank talk about XRP if it was nothing, if it wasn't going to do anything? Why would the IMF talk about it, the International Monetary Fund, right? I mean, why are they sitting down next to people like um, Christine Lagarde, right? And uh, I think it was the Saudi Arabian. Uh, right here is a picture. Um, Director of Monetary Funds, uh, Chairman of Saudi Arabian Monetary Authority, Chief Executive Hong Kong Monetary Authority, <laughs> Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple, and then you have Christine Lagarde. There's the back of her head right there. I mean, if Ripple and XRP are going to die, like people suggest, then why why would, you know, because leaders, especially central banks, they are very picky about who they surround themselves with. Do you honestly think, like, let, let's take this guy, for example. The chairman of Saudi Arabian Monetary Authority. Do you think he's sitting next to Vitalik? No. Is he sitting next to the Dogecoin creator? No. Right? Is he is he sitting next to Charles Hopskin skin skin whatever his name is? No. Um, so, I mean, this is why I'm investing. People go, why do you like XRP? Because Ripple is saturated with high level people. And then, but people don't care about that. I mean, Ripple can be sitting next to the president of the United States. It wouldn't matter to certain people because you know why? Price rules everything. Price is king. And that's true. That's a true statement. Price is king, right? So it doesn't matter, uh, you know, uh, for example, Anthony Pompliano was talking to uh, Raul Paul, a very, very successful investor. Now, Anthony Pompli, uh, Anthony, I'll just say Anthony, my, my uh, words aren't coming out properly today. Um, he was sitting next to uh, Raul, Raul Paul, and they were talking about, um, you know, certain crypto assets, you know, they don't do so well, um, but they have a very probable and uh, brilliant use case and Anthony was shaking his head yes yes and agreeing with it right but anyway I'm don't want to stir off the subject but at the end of the day you know looking at the this is the this is this is a document from the World Bank and you can see right here um, two digital currencies fall into this category ripple net uh, both ripple and stellar enable um, faster and more efficient cross-border payments relative to correspondent banking. Wow, so the World Bank is speaking nicely and highly. I mean, this is the World Bank. So when people ask, why do you invest in XRP? Well, I mean, it's, it's clear as day that XRP is the winner. You even had Lynette Zhang talking about how... Um, interesting xrp is right they are the chosen ones in my opinion that you know maybe it doesn't happen maybe but here's the thing even if they don't succeed and they don't and they're not with all these high level people it's it's still they can get a percentage of what they're trying to do right so uh i don't want to make this a fundamental video but 
there's so many things um, why Ripple is positioning themselves for literally complete world domination in the crypto blockchain derivative. We have a derivative problem, right? The, the whole world is manipulated and rigged by computers and derivatives. A derivative is basically that, like you take the value of something. What is a financial derivative? According to Wikipedia, in finance, a derivative is a contract that derives its value from the performance of an underlying entity. There you go. So um, nobody can say it better than Google, right? So it's the it's basically a contract or something that is taking um, the underlining uh, the, the value of the underlining asset, right? So if something is performing at optimum levels, and its real value is 100 billion, but its output value is like 500 billion, there's a derivative of that, right? And people trade derivatives, but there's a problem with it. There's too many and it's clogging up the financial system. So how do you fix it? Well, people have tokenization, they have, um, you know, I, and the, for me, the biggest thing would be using RippleNet's technology. Um, and then also XRP. XRP can solve this problem because it acts as a bridge. Um, and then also, you know, the FX market and things of that sort. But so anyways, I apologize. I digress. Um, just, you know, talking to different people and trying to answer questions, not on my channel or anything, just friends I have and people who don't understand. So uh, forgive me for, for venting, but you know what? It I can't help it, you know, that's, it's a passion of mine, uh, technical analysis, but then also, you know, investing is also a passion of mine. And when I really do the work on trying to uncover what Ripple really is, um, and what XRP's use case, there's a lot of different theories and things like that. Maybe some of them are real, maybe some of them are not, but all it takes is 1% of one thing to be real, and you have yourself something very interesting. Um, you know, so there's a broad range, you know, payments, derivatives, the like the FX market. Um, so, you know, you gotta start small. Like for example, Brad Garlinghouse even said this. Amazon, he, he wants to be the Amazon of payments. And they said they're gonna put a dent in the universe. You know, Amazon started off doing books. That was their thing, books. Just like Ripple is starting off doing payments. But then eventually Amazon moved to this and this and this and this and all things, right? Now it's basically taking over the whole world, right? Everybody's used Amazon. It's a, it's one of the biggest online, It's I think it is the biggest online company in the world, Amazon, right? I buy stuff from Amazon all the time. It gets to my house in 24 hours. And they, they got reasonable pricing compared to some other places, right? But anyways, um, Ripple starts off with payments. But what do you think they're going to move to next? And Brad Garlinghouse even talked about it. Hey, they're going to move to other things, right? And that'll yet to be determined and disclosed. But, um, you know, it, it people buy XRP and they want it to happen today, tomorrow, right? It doesn't work like that. Ripple... If you look at the stock market, like look at Amazon, look how long Amazon took to really start exploding. So here's the price of Amazon right here. Look at this from 1998, flat, 2001, flat, 2003, 2005, 2007, 2009, flat, 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 flat. And then they really just took off and went berserk right around 2016, 2017. So Amazon's the biggest company almost in the world. And it took about um, 20 years before that happened, right? So if you look at 1998, right? So then go to 2008, that's 10 years of going flat, right? And then 2008 to 2018, that's when it really started picking up. So I would say probably more like 15 years. XRP is a baby. It's only been out since um, 2012, 2013. No, yeah, about 2013, 2014. So here's 
XRP right here, you know, on the Amazon or on the, uh, on the Binance chart. That's what happens when you only sleep a couple hours um, and you got kids and you're trying to do things. You start. Anyways. <laughs> OK, so now, um, yeah, we have this chart is a baby. And like I'm like I'm saying, like I like to compare Ripple to Amazon. Right. And Ripple is just starting out. They've only been around since 2013. So, you know, for about 10 years now, um, about 10, 11 years. So and look what the price has done. It's gone up. Coming down to the low uh, to where it relative where it is now, that's 12,000 percent right um the all-time high is about seventy-five thousand percent so but that's the thing people who buy crypto they expect it to pump 200 300 percent within six months of buying it three months of buying it right especially like the meme coins and things like that or, or even bitcoin they expect it to go up because that's what people are conditioned to think you know when you buy a crypto People are conditioned to have that dopamine hit, right? That, you know, the the instant gratification. But that's not real investing. That's 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 playing. That's gambling. You know, when you go to Las Vegas and you put the, you know, you, you hit the button and you ding, 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 ding. All of that stuff is psychologically designed to make your brain basically light up like a Christmas tree. And that's what people do for, for crypto. If you want to really invest like Warren Buffett, you have to sit there and do real work on the company, on the token, think about possibilities, think about partnerships, think about what they're really trying to do. We have the cloud over our head with the, with the lawsuit, but it actually was a blessing in disguise, right? You know, it takes years to embed yourself and I mean, like I said, look at Amazon. Look how long it took. Look at Facebook, right? I think Facebook was a little quicker, right? I mean, look at Google. I mean, they are basically world domination companies. But look how long it took them to get there, right? So when people say, oh, I buy XRP, I'm going to sell it because it doesn't do anything. They're not real investors. They, they don't understand the concept of hodling. Hodling literally means hodling. You hold on for dear life. Don't worry about what the day-to-day -day price action. Look at this. Look at this massive range here. Crazy. Unbelievable range, right? Um, and it would drive people insane. But if you go to, for example, gold, that's even worse. I mean, it took 20, it took uh, from 19, let me see. I mean, look at this. Here's the price of gold. And nobody's going to give up their gold. Look at this. Do you think China and Russia are giving away their gold? No, they're buying gold. But look at this. Gold is a dinosaur. Look at this. This was the all-time high, right? And that was back uh, in 2000, 2011. It didn't break above its all-time high until... Uh, 10 years later, essentially, it took 10 years to break above the all time high. That is nuts. And then it, and then look what happened. It went back below it. It couldn't even do it. And then it came back at above it again. False breakout, false breakout. And now eventually now it's starting to go. So it really took like 14 years. So Ripple has been in a base for six years and people are complaining. But look at gold. It's taken it's it's taken f almost 15 years right and gold is we know gold has stood the test of time it's a real um it's not a scam we know that it's it's a real legitimate asset so that's what i'm, I'm trying to and you say well why are you saying all this i'm trying to make people understand the perspective of patience and real investing right I mean, look at this right here. Successful investing takes time, discipline, and patience, no matter how great the talent or effort. Some things just take time. You can't produce a baby in one month by getting nine women pregnant. That is a brilliant quote.
basically saying like, you know, if you if you spend a hundred dollars on XRP, if you spend nine hundred dollars on XRP, it's not going to make you any richer. It's not going to speed up the time, right? Here's another one: the stock market. Well, really, crypto market, right? The stock market is worse. It takes so much longer. Like if you look at Coca-Cola, if you look at all these broad companies, they take tons of time, right? I mean, Tesla was actually pretty quick, but um, you know, people are so used to crypto that instant, oh my God, it's pumping and it's never stopping. Uh, you know, you know, three weeks down, three weeks up, right? Insane volatility, but eventually that will go away. That volatility we we know and love will go away because the bigger the market cap gets of crypto, the the harder it is to move the market. That's why the stock market doesn't move so crazy rapidly, because a lot of the people investing are pension funds, 401ks, and they do it methodically, right? They don't have these insane volatile moments um, like crypto, and eventually that will happen with crypto it'll be it'll level off it'll still have amazing bull runs and upswings but it'll start to level off and be more um you know normal so you know this quote here the stock market is a device for transferring money from the impatient to the patient transferring wealth right um so you know if you buy xrp if you buy it does i'm just using it as an example it could be any coin you have to have patience, right? You know, uh, a couple red candles, it, you know, people look at the market every day. Um, but do you think this guy right here, like let's say he bought Wells Fargo and he does own some of it. Um, do you think he's looking at the Wells Fargo chart every day? Probably is, maybe he is, right? But do you think he's like stressing about it? No, because you got to know what you hold. If, if, you, if you truly know what you hold, then you're not worried about it. Because I know what I hold. I hold XRP. I, and, I, and nobody can pry it from my hands. Right? I remember it was almost Christmas. And they came out with that lawsuit. And the price just completely dumped. It didn't, I didn't even flinch. I was like, yeah, yeah, right. Because I kind of felt like this is not, I'm not going to sell. My buddy I worked with at, at, at the, I used to work at a school. And uh, he, he was an IT guy, did computers and things. And he called me as soon as the lawsuit. He goes, I sold all my XRP, I got out. He actually, you know, he, he actually, from the time being, did pretty good, right? But I just said, nah, I'm not going to sell my XRP. I, I just feel like something was up with that. And then sure enough, a couple months later, the price exceeded up to $2 um, and went above where it sold off from, right? But then eventually it came back down into reaccumulation. So the point is, as you are investing in something, um, a crazy volatile move, yes, you want to take profit. Yes, you want a dollar cost average in and out. But your long-term core position should be looking towards the future, right? So um, if Ripple has this amazing IPO, um, uh, you know, they have new partnerships and it really starts to grow. It's like, would you sell Amazon after its first major rally, right? If you did, you make money, you can buy back in. Of course, that's what I'm doing because I'm trading, right? Um, but my core position, I, I kind of just leave it alone. And you can see, you know, it just basically was flattening out. It didn't, here, so here's the all-time high right there. And Amazon didn't break above its all-time high. Uh, let's see, so there's the all-time high. And then it finally broke above its all-time high 10 years later. So it took 10 years for Amazon to break above its all-time high. So I think I made my point very clearly that, you know. And then look what it did. We had a rise. We had a crash. We had a retrace. 
This is my signature right here. And then look what it did. Reaccumulation. We had a rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulate. Look how long it went sideways in reaccumulation. And then bam, we broke out. I mean, isn't that amazing? Rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation, sideways, breakout. Now look at XRP right here. That's exactly what's happening with XRP. And by the way, XRP's only been six years, right? It's only been six. So if the largest company, online company in the world took 10, can you at least give some XRP some slack? You could say, but people don't because they compare it to other crypto coins, right? And the other crypto coins are not based off investing. They're based off speculation and speculation increases the volatility. So that's why you have these wild rallies that they're really not accounted for. They make no sense because they're not backed up by true value, right? Unlike Bitcoin and maybe Ethereum and some of the projects, right? So like, for example, like Avalanche is a legitimate, but you know, if you look at some random meme coin, it's already gone up so much percent, right? People, people look at that and say, well, that meme coin has to be better. Well, no, that's not investing though. So anyway, uh, the same thing with Amazon, right? We have a rise, we have a crash, we have a retrace, we have reaccumulation, and now we're going sideways, just exactly like Amazon. So here we go. I put actually, you know, I didn't know I was going to do this. I was just going to get right into the price, talk about XRP versus Bitcoin. I'm still going to do that, but I kind of just going to through this road that I feel like for my own self need to go through because I need, um, you know, this explanation. Right. Um, and for me, sometimes it leads to interesting things. Now, I haven't looked at Amazon. I don't even look at Amazon. And I didn't even really care about it. But I mean, if you look at this, look at here, Amazon's on top. You have a rise, crash, rise, crash. Then you had a retracement, you had a retracement, then you went down, then you went down, and then you're sort of going sideways, going sideways. It's exactly the same thing. And it's funny that Brad Gardinghouse talked about comparing, he, he, he said he wants to be the next Amazon for payments, right? Amazon is to books as Ripple is to payments. Those are his, his words. So looking at XRP on linear scale, remember this downward resistance line, very interesting. We broke above it, right? We broke out, we back tested it. And this was basically that first rally, right? Same thing with like Amazon, that first big rally. And then um, just real quick though, to show you the rest of the Amazon chart, and I promise we will get into it very quickly i mean you can see look at this look how flat it looks like think about this xrp is all the way over here right xrp is kind of over here and then look what happens after that but let me put it on log scale and show you so as soon as it broke above its pretend that this is an XRP price. This is $3.33. Um, look what it did after that. I mean, of course, XRP is not going to do this because usually crypto goes like this, boom, and then it comes down, boom, right? Whereas the stock market goes more organically. But you can see right here when it broke above the all-time high, it just continues to climb, 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 right? So it's been climbing ever since, not saying that's going to be with XRP. It's just funny that its first rally, its first bull run, same thing with XRP, its first bear market, its first retracement, and its first reaccumulation, that's exactly where XRP is, um, you know, what do you think happens when we break out? I think something interesting happens. Now, talking about um, XRP versus Bitcoin, we can see on the weekly chart, the price broke out of this and it came all the way back down and back tested the downward resistance line. So, um, and then we also have one, two, 
three, four, and an extended fifth. We have five waves. And then we also have a base forming. We have one, two, three, four, five, six weekly candles going sideways. So, and then we're also going sideways on top of the downward resistance line. So to me, this is a reversal area. This is a longing opportunity, not financial advice. But to me, relative to Bitcoin, um, now let's zoom in here. And then also, like I said, too, we had a triple nine buy, right? Let's zoom in to the, let's go to the four day chart. And look at this. This is, see how the price is going down like this? The candles of the, the body of the candles are going down, right? But at the same time, we're also creating a base in here. Right, and then it's also a Wyckoff, I'll talk about that, but look at this. Let me show you, looking at the MACD, look at this, we have a crossover, right? We came all the way down, uh, let's see, where was that at? From the top of here, right? And we're going all the way down and we finally got that cross. And that cross is happening at the end of the fifth wave. So you can see, let me try to zoom in here. Um, yeah, there's a bullish crossover. So let me get rid of that. And now check this out. We have extreme, some extreme bullish divergence here. So, like I was saying, you see how the candles are going down? Down, right? But look at the RSI, it's going up. So we have one, two, three. We have triple bullish divergence and it's coming off of an extreme oversold. It's extremely oversold, and now we have this triple divergence. At the same time, XRP versus USD has completed its contracting triangle, and it's also in wave E, right? And it's also coming off of that diagonal that we'll talk about too. Um, but yeah, you can see kind of like a falling wedge here. So to me, I think this thing's gonna break out. I really do. So let me take that off. Um, let's look at it from the daily chart now. I bet the daily is even worse. Oh man, look at that. That is extreme bullish divergence right there. Look at this. Here's the low and we're going up, 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 right? And then you start it from the same area and look at we're going down. So, um, Pretty interesting there. Let me see the weekly. I don't think the weekly chart has it though. No, the weekly isn't there quite yet. Um, but yeah, actually a little bit. Um, we have a higher high on the RSI here, um, but not really on the on the candle. So um, zooming in, this is an unconventional video, guys. This is not my everyday style. Um, this is unconventional. I'm just kind of going all over the place. So, um, and there's a reason for that. I'm going to tie it in all together. So, I'm looking at this like Wyckoff accumulation. So, here's the example of that Wyckoff accumulation. So, let me show you here. So, just to keep in mind, look how far we've been going down. I mean, we've been going down for, I think it was 258 days. So nothing goes down forever. And we can see a base developing here. And in this base, we have bullish divergence. And in the bullish divergence, we are also coming off a major, major trend line, right? Well, I'll talk about that too. Um, but first, look at this bullish divergence here. There's so many things. Um, to talk about not enough time but you can see here um, we have one two three and then we come down and break the low right so same thing here one two three we come down and we break this low right then we come back up we come back up right without taking out this high same thing here we come back up without taking out this high then we sort of have this chop, 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 chop in this U shape, sort of this this U cupish shape right here. Same thing here, this cup shape, right? And then eventually, 
you can see I think we're right here same thing right here right so eventually I think this thing's gonna you know maybe we have another hit to the low maybe um, it's a spring phase right so that could happen too where you get something like this where it comes down like what theta did it takes out this low then it swoops back up but it kind of doesn't look like it's gonna do that it looks more like it's gonna round out here and come up here then once it breaks above this resistance then we'll probably play around right in here and by the way this is kind of where theta theta fuel is and a lot of other coins like h bar they're sort of in this area here on their usd pairings so that's what i really believe here now it can take more time it can go sideways for another month before doing that it can come down and break the low before doing that the point is it's looking really beautiful here for wyckoff accumulation so again, we have one, two, three, one, two, three. We have the move down, we have the move down. Come back up without taking out the top. Come back up without taking out the top. Then we swoop around, we swoop around. Now all we need is that, that pump, right? And if you look closely, now I could take all that off the screen. Um, you know, we have one, two, and three we have three waves down right and then we also have um you know this base look at this we're forming another base right maybe it's another miniature uh sort of wyckoff accumulation base here maybe maybe not um but yeah you we have we, we come down right we have a bottom we have a double bottom we have this move to the upside and then i really like this sort of this corrective sort of spring pullback, right? We have a low and it, you can see how it, it took out the low and it was a liquidity grab and then bam, we came right back up. So we're in between point A and point B. We're in the middle of this retracement down. So we really wanna see um, break above this here. So if we can get going here, then it's gonna look much more likely of this being Wyckoff accumulation. So I'm getting very bullish on XRP. We had a massive dump. I mean, you can see, I mean, look how many red candles in a row. Now the normal investor wouldn't want to touch it with a 10 foot pole, but that's where, you know, if you, like I'm saying, like if you really know what XRP is, you really know what Ripple the company, you see the people that they're surrounding themselves with, right um like the saudi arabian monetary authority um the chief hong kong executive monetary i mean these are high 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 level people and for brad garlinghouse to even be 10 feet near them let alone sitting at the same table right you have to take that serious very serious that's why i think a lot of, that's why there's a a smear campaign out there for xrp if you go through all the crypto channels most of the mainstream YouTube crypto channels hate XRP. The reason why is because it's the biggest threat. And they're also the reason why is because that's what the narrative suggests, right? Who owns the market? The Bitcoin people, right? Bitcoin, Ethereum, right? Look at Cointelegraph. Look at all these. You know, they control the narrative, right? So, but I'm against that. It's just like, you know, CNN and Fox News, all the fake news out there. They want to control the narrative, but people are waking up and understanding it's all fake, right? So same thing with XRP. They, 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 they try to smear it because they're afraid of it. They understand how powerful it could be, right? Um, so nothing's ever for sure. Maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe it goes to zero. Maybe they're right. We just, you know, that's all about investing. You, you got to place your bets. So um, zooming out here to let's go like to a higher time frame i mean you can see this trend line here right so if i put it from here to there you can see we are bouncing off that trend line there right and then um on the and then also on the higher time frame we have hidden bullish divergence you can see this hidden bullish 
divergence right here we're going up this is coming down right um, so um, yeah it'll be interesting to see how it reacts off of this trend line and that's another reason I mean so let me just let me spell it out so this is sort of the the summary okay so number one we have the price coming down in five waves we have divergence between the fourth and the fifth wave we also have bullish divergence on the four day chart on this rally coming up we also are bouncing off a six year trend line we also are drastically away from this um, this downward resistance line here so it would make sense for that right um, I guess you can say I guess you can say um, this would could be an A, B, C, D, and E. It looks like we're potentially in that final E wave before the breakout. So we're coiling in, you know, here's your demand line, here's your supply line. Eventually these two lines meet and the price has a volatile moment. Now, it could break down, but it's not really likely. It's more likely to have a bounce. Now, I will say this, if Bitcoin starts to rally hard towards 100k then that means it could potentially outperform xrp in the short term but if that's the case and then xrp kind of goes down a little bit more it would actually be even better for xrp because the higher bitcoin goes you know looking at 2017 bitcoin was already in a bear market by the time xrp exploded right so bitcoin went to 20k it allowed XRP to run really high, right? So sometimes Bitcoin likes to, you know, it's playing around around its all-time high. If it gets to 80K, 100K, and it outperforms XRP, it'll only do it in the short term. And then once it settles down, you can see this thing really rip to the upside. So, and then to top it off, now let's look at the XRP USD chart. And really the main story here today is the downward resistance line, right? So if I co I'm connecting it, right, you can see right here, barely touching it there. You can see we're going through here as, as long as we're not going through the bodies. And you can see, look at all these touches. With trend lines, you want the most amount of touches. So all of these touches, we break out. And look at this. Uh, this is the three week chart. We could come down and back test um, the top of this. And we did. So, I mean, we're right there. And then, you know, counting that with, with um, XRP versus Bitcoin, counting that with the lawsuit being settled, um, counting that with all the things Ripple has done, right? That's more long term stuff. But then you look at, Bitcoin at an all-time high right and then you also look at this you see this triangle we have an a actually let me label it for real actually let me go to log scale and take all of this off and show you this right here so we also have this now to top it all off even more than we already did we have a b c d right and then we have one two three down for e so it looks like it's complete now if now zooming in right here you also have potentially um a contracting triangle in wave e oftentimes that can do that so again you have a b c D and now we're getting E. Let me change the color. I mean, we're right there. So in wave E, we need three waves. Um, so maybe it's a flat three. So one, two, three, or better yet, we have one, two, and then we come down for three and then we go. So we can come down break below the bull market support band get everybody super bearish oh my god we're going down it's it's crashing and then bam so um yeah and then also 
that three wave shape lines up with this one two um, three four five right uh, and then you have a b c so that lines up and then you also have the bigger time you have one two three four five a b c with a one two and now let's get that third wave so or what we got to finish up wave two though um, and then to top it off again we have we have um, obviously this we come down this is our retracement we come all the way down into reaccumulation we break out and then we go into our second reaccumulation phase that's exactly let me zoom out a little bit that's exactly what Bitcoin did before it exploded to the upside right so and then when you look at it compare it down here we have uh, uh, a b c d e a b c d e right contracting triangle or rise crash retrace reaccumulation sideways breakout rise crash retrace reaccumulation sideways waiting for that breakout how do we know when the breakouts there well look at this we come down into our first base we break out into our second base where have we seen that before let's look at bitcoin here so if you look at bitcoin that line is our all-time high right we came down rise crash we came down into re uh we made this base down here it didn't have the reaccumulation but it did have these accumulation bases so this was our first base we broke out and then we developed our second base right so and then let me make it a little bit bigger right and that's exactly what kind of happened is with XRP and then you can see where it was right and then look at this on the second base we have an A B C uh, D and an E and look where E is right E is right at the bull market support band right so we have that second base A B C D E right on the bull market support band and then what happened the price had a one two and then it had this big number three right one two three we had a breakout we broke above the range we came all the way back down a b c we back tested the range and the bull market support band and then we continued higher so let's look at xrp again so here's our move down here's our base right and then we had a b c d e and look where e is e is right on the bull market support band so then what comes next well we got we have to wait till it's complete complete so we could maybe go sideways for a little bit maybe we come down hit the low right and then we continue um we have that big one two and then we break out right we break out of here like this and then we come back down and we back test the top right a b c and then we continue higher so hopefully that happens april may um my quote unquote kind of prediction would be to break above this range in april or may so i got less than 60 days so let's go <laughs> uh so other than that the only thing that's the dilemma here is would be Bitcoin. So let's zoom in with Bitcoin here and let's talk about the recent move back down. So basically one of the things I talked about here is saying that, you know, been saying it for a while that this is a one, two, three, four, five. That's wave A. And then we come up one, two, three. That's wave B. I didn't know if wave B was complete. We could have had one more wave to the upside. Didn't look that like that was gonna happen. So then we have uh, a one, two, and now we're getting three, right? So then we get probably four and five, and that would be wave C, and then we can go. So that's kind of how I would how I would look at it, and then hopefully, you know, at some point we can 
it's still quite a ways away but hopefully at some point we can come down and test the bull market support band because it does look like it needs to be tested it hasn't tested in quite a while so I, I would I would believe that that's where it's gonna go now there is an alternative to suggest that this could do something like this and pop the high and then come back down into that wave C so there's always that option but it doesn't look like that's gonna happen because we already overlapped into wave one and you know if, if we break this one two if we break this two here then it's we're probably gonna come down you know as suggested so that would be that idea and now the other op option would be is to go into reaccumulation so again this is my preferred and this this has been my, my main idea ever since we've been here which is rise crash retrace reaccumulation sideways and then we break out so we don't necessarily correct hard through price we correct through time now it's either that or a b c and then go now depending what happens in here can have a really interesting effect on on xrp for example if xrp wants to or i'm sorry if bitcoin wants to take a big dump in this a b c and continue dumping in this wave c we could get a big pump in xrp versus bitcoin so that's when you look at xrp versus btc right let me take all that off because bitcoin is correcting from a major rally you know it, it went from less than 20k all the way up to 70 plus k right xrp has been ranging 50 60 cents for a long time so it doesn't have that much room to the downside it's been you know consolidated right and it's been falling against bitcoin ever since so if bitcoin has a big dump and xrp ha also has a dump but not nearly as impactful then we could see a big pump here in xrp versus bitcoin so i mean here's bitcoin and xrp um side by side so xrp is on the bottom and you can see if i do this look at this look at this divergence you can see bitcoin climbing 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 higher and higher but look at xrp it's going flat so if bitcoin dumps then xrp could dump too but it, look at it's in this tight range it doesn't really have much room to dump bitcoin can dump pretty hard pretty fast right it can even come all the way down and back test these areas here. Not saying it's going to do that, but at least the bull market support band. So if that's the case and it comes down, then we can see XRP versus Bitcoin climb to the upside, right? Because here is, let me take this one off. That's the price of Bitcoin. Here's the price of XRP versus Bitcoin. So we can see this thing coming up. And that would be a good indicator that XRP USD can start breaking higher. Because when you put both charts on, you can see the, the divergence here. Um, so if we look at what happened last time, right? I mean right now you can see this going up this coming sideways now if you go back over to the last rally here uh let's zoom in to the the daily or even just back um in the previous rally bitcoin had xrp only went into a retracement by the way but look at this you can see they're both flat and then you can see bitcoin starts to go up but look at xrp it's going it's in this box in here Look at this. It's in this box. Once Bitcoin got to the very, very top of its cycle, let me put a line right here. This is when Bitcoin broke out. Or this is when XRP broke out. So let me zoom in there. I'll put the line right there. So you can see 
Bitcoin's going up, XRP's going sideways, just like theta, right? And then look what happens. Once Bitcoin gets to the range, right? Once it starts to dis go into distribution in this range, that's when XRP, that's when theta, that's when the rest of the market explodes because this right here is distribution. All of this is rotating back into XRP, which causes this cycle, right? So if that's the case, if you go back over here and you take, let's take everything off and we apply that same logic, right? What do we see? We see the exact same thing happening. We see Bitcoin going higher and XRP in this box. So then once Bitcoin, let's say it has another wave to the upside, that would actually be pretty good, right? If it has another wave to the upside, actually, let me do well, it's okay, right? We have another wave and then we start to dis we, we start to go in distribution, right? As soon as it does that, then XRP can catch up, right? Same thing that happened back over here. So let, let's zoom in over here. I mean, look at this. You could see Bitcoin's going higher, right? But as Bitcoin's going up, look at XRP, it's going flat. Once Bitcoin gets to the top, that's when XRP takes off. Then XR, then Bitcoin crashes, right? Let me take, uh, let me take this one off the screen here. Or actually, let me put it back on. So I'll just do this. So Bitcoin crashed and then it retraced and then it continued to crash. So I'm just going to trace it. So then I'll take the price off. And there you go. You can see the lines. That's what that's what the price of Bitcoin did. Right. So. We can see right as it got to the top, that's when XRP took off. And then look what happened. Bitcoin crashed to the downside. And as it crashed, XRP continued to go higher. And then once Bitcoin went into its retracement, look what XRP did. It exploded, right? So it went into its topping formation, and that's when it exploded. Same thing back over here, right? Um, it, it wasn't until Bitcoin topped out, that's when XRP really started to run. So maybe Bitcoin has to go to 100K before XRP can run right um but judging by the chart it looks like it's getting closer because you can see here this is where xrp really took off but look bitcoin was already at its top so i just showed two examples of that happening right and then i can even show the same example let me go back over here with the price of theta So look at this. Here's the price of Bitcoin. It's going higher. You can see the price of Theta is flat. Once Bitcoin got to the top, that's when Theta took off, right? It was only until it got to the top. So if we apply that same logic, look at the difference now, right? You can start to see that first pump to the upside so where was that first pump to the upside that first pump was right here and this is what theta did so then what did bitcoin do it pulled all the way back and then it continued higher so it's as if bitcoin is right here let me actually it's as if bitcoin is kind of right here Oh, it's not going to do it because I'm not on the actual chart, but that's okay. Um, so, you know, you could see Bitcoin, and it's the same thing. Look at this. Bitcoin had this A, B, C. So A, B, C, and then it continued higher. And Bitcoin right now is like right here. Because if you look at the current chart, let's go to the current chart you can see Bitcoin 
is in its A, B, C potentially. So A, B, and C. And then it goes. Right? And then what does it do after that? And then after that, it has this big wave up, something like this. Okay, fair enough. So let me just put that over here. Um, so I had this wave down, and then it came up, big wave, and then it did something like this. And then it eventually came down. So maybe we have to wait until this part right so bitcoin comes down then it explodes and then once we get into this phase that's when you can see xrp take off and theta like really really take off i still think it'll take off much sooner than that but really really have their final blow off tops right because if you look over here and actually let me take a fractal now that i'm on the appropriate um chart it is it is a long video but it is what it is kind of went off there my rants um let's see there we go so something like that so we could see bitcoin do something like that right where we come down ABC, we retest the bull market support band, right? And now let me put on XRP. Uh, let's do XRP, new price scale. Right, so once Bitcoin gets into this area i'm just going based off the previous two times so the previous two times once bitcoin got it to its topping then that's when xrp went wild so uh let me tr try to match that up here so we come down come back up and then it just takes off and it goes to outer space so we'll see it's all speculation based off previous cycles but um yeah that'll uh do it for this video let me get back to xrp versus bitcoin i mean this was the three month candle right so we had this wave up we have this a b c pullback we have a low we have a higher low so wave one a b c so it looks like it wants to continue going up if we don't go up then at least we need a retracement i mean look at this look at this monster move right here let me make it like this we had all of this all the way down right and now we're back in the bottom this is accumulation back up here is the selling right so we have this big move to the downside so what follows that you have a rise crash now we need a retracement so even if xrp isn't going to go berserk it still is going to go berserk but because you need this retracement right if it falls down and it has a base down in here to to similar to that base then it needs to come up and have a retracement before either continuing higher or coming back down into reaccumulation then continue higher you see what I mean? So XRP is going to um, go up. I just don't know, you know when that could be. I think we're getting close based off the, the triangle and everything I've already mentioned. So it should be very interesting. I mean, because when you look at this, XRP versus Bitcoin, um, let me actually put it on log scale. Yeah, it, it, it definitely needs... A retracement anytime you have a massive let's see we came all the way down we're like 96 percent right a 96 percent crash there needs to be a snapback right so you have a rise crash you built the base now you need a retracement so that's coming i don't i believe 
full heartedly that that will come. I don't know when it will come. It's very hard to know exactly when, but based on the data I've already presented, um, you know, looking at it on the on the weekly chart. Take all this off. You know, we already have our rise crash, our retrace, our reaccumulation, right? So think about it like that. XRP versus Bitcoin, the chart is at the bottom while XRP versus USD is in reaccumulation. At the same time, it's at the end of its A, A, B, C, D, and now it's in E. And then when you look closely at E, you also have A, B, C, D, E. And then when you look at all of it together, it all starts to make sense. So um, the price is dumping right now. Let's let's try to do some short-term analysis here. Now it's the same kind of thing like like I said with Bitcoin, right? If we have an A, B, and a C, then we that's probably normally what will happen. But you can also have a rise, crash, retrace. You come down for reaccumulation, you go sideways here, and then you start to break out. Um, it doesn't look too pretty now. I mean, obviously, on the short term, you have a, this head and shoulders right here. So it still needs some, definitely some work. Um, but it's looking, you know, pretty reversalist. The reason I say that is because look at this. You have one, two, three, and then you have one, two, three, right? So we could possibly, you know, continue down and it can be an A, B, and a C, something like that. Or you have W, X, and then you come up for Y. So you have three, 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 right? So it really depends on, on, on some, uh, you know, what Bitcoin's going to do. But I really would like it to, to hold this low down in here. Um, so, so far we have a higher low, right? So we came down. Also, we have one, two, three, four, five, rolled back up for six, came down for seven. And then usually when you have this seven wave, really it's five, but you count it seven, you have this bounce up. And then what happens is when you get this bounce up, you usually kind of flag out in here before continuing higher. So it really depends if it's going to break the low. And if it does, it won't be a big deal because it'll just be an ABC. And then it would also, and that would actually kind of be better in a way because then it would finish up wave E because every wave needs three waves, right? So A, B, C, D, and then you have one, two, three for wave E, right? So we're in that final potential, that one, two, three, that final third wave for wave E. So <laughs> um, anything can happen. Anything can happen. And then also, real quick, if I take a Fibonacci, since we're here, we'll put it up there to the top of that. Um, right now we have a 618 retrace. Right, so we really don't want to break below the 702. We want to stay above. Is this? Let me see if this is not on log scale. Is this on linear? Yeah. So we want to stay above the 618. We we officially came down. I mean, we already did it once. Now we're retesting that 618. We really need to hold above it. So, yeah, this would be kind of an area to take take a shot maybe. Um, for dollar cost averaging, not financial advice, but let's zoom in even closer and see if we could see anything. Let's go to the 30 minute. Um, we got some bullish divergence on the 30. You can see the price coming down, RSI going up. It's not really strong, but it's there. Um, let's see what else we have here. 
looks like we have a one, two, one, two, three, four, five, or I would say one, two, um, all of that would be f one, two, all of this is three. Um, maybe we're getting four and then we get five or potentially you could say one, two, right? Is the first wave. And then the third wave, you have one, two, three, four, five in wave three. And then this is wave four. And then we have one, two, three, four, five in wave five. So maybe we're bottoming out here. It looks decent and we're right at the bull market support band, right? And then what's kind of interesting is, you know, you, you always want to wait for confirmation. You know, this thing can continue to dump big time, especially if Bitcoin is, you know, but I say we're getting close. We did come below the bull market support band. We shot up and then we came back down. This could be a one, two, and we're holding above. I'd like to see it continue to hold above here. So we're at the low of the low of the low. So hopefully we can stay above that. If not, again, we just go do that ABC. No big deal. Um, the important thing is for me is, you know, on this smaller time frame, I know we have divergence bullish, um, but we are essentially building a base in here. So we'll see. We'll see. I mean, it could also be flagging out for a fourth wave. That's yet to be determined. Um, but right now you have one, two three four five right and the, that's three and then you come up for wave four and then you have one two three four and then five so maybe one more hit to the low to finish up that fifth wave and then we can get the heck out of here i don't know it's very very hard to, to know on the short time frame it's almost pointless um but just for fun since i'm here let's take a look at it so somewhere in there Put it this way, I'm dollar costing, I'm dollar cost averaging, um, just doing little increments there and there, um, you know, and waiting for a reversal to come in. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, longer than I anticipated, but it's okay. We got it done. We got it through. And uh, I will catch you guys on the next video. If you can, that would be awesome if you can leave a like and drop a comment let me know what you guys think and hit subscribe if you haven't already and uh, if you want to support the channel you can always do so um, i have a youtube tip jar if you wanted to support the channel but other than that i will try to get a that rapid fire video out um, definitely sometime this week um, so I've got a pretty long list of coins. I got to add them to my watch list. I haven't looked at any of them. I'll probably just do it, you know, as live as I'm doing it. So, uh, yeah, that shall be, should be pretty interesting. Um, and then again, I will say we're at the beginning of the week, which is good. You want it, if you're going to get a dump, you want it to dump at the end, at the beginning of the week. That way you have a chance to bounce back at the end of the week. It's not how you start, it's how you finish, right? So um, come Thursday, Friday, and it really we have till about Thursday, Friday to get our momentum back. And then kind of Saturday, Sunday, you level off. Sunday, you get the close. It sets the tone for the following week. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. But anyways, thank you guys. I will catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.